the NBA is back. After a long offseason, the players are finally hitting the court again. And we've got all the latest news and analysis right here. From whether or not NBA players would thrive on TikTok to the drama in the Nats locker room, we'll keep you up to date on everything you need to know about the NBA. Kicking us off, should more NBA stars be making use of TikTok? Well, if Kevin Durant's experience is to be considered, I don't think so. Kevin Durant is one of the best players in the world, but he does a lot more off the court that keeps fans interested when the season's over. This summer has been mostly about Durant's request to be traded out of Brooklyn, but he's also kept talking to fans and the media on Twitter, as he usually does. And it looks like KD is no longer only able to express himself on Twitter. Recently, Durant put up his first TikTok. And as expected, Durant, being the old man that he is, didn't know how to use it. The short video showed that he was confused. He didn't seem to know what to do with the camera pointed at his face. Even though KD is very passionate on the court and in his answers off of it, it's his deadpan delivery in these kinds of situations that makes him so funny. Even though a lot of people on TikTok follow trends and do certain dances and other things, it's hard to imagine KD putting out content like Damian Lillard does. Durant will be able to use this new medium, which is popular with teenagers and younger people, to connect with even more people than he does now. We still don't know if that's a good idea or not, since he already gets criticized for what he says. But the superstar is also the last person who cares about that. People can grow their brand by using social media, especially popular sites like TikTok. Like most NBA stars, Durant is also a businessman. He already puts out content in the form of a podcast, so this could be another way for him to make progress in that area. Next, Kyle Lowry and the drama of his past. Kyle Lowry has been one of the most reliable guards in the NBA for a long time, but he still had his share of critics, including people who made comments about his weight. Lowry won the NBA championship with Toronto in 2019 and has been an all-star six times and won the Olympic gold medal, so it's safe to say he's had the last laugh. But the 36-year-old has said that personal insults and body shaming used to hurt him a lot when he was younger. The Miami Heat player talked about how people talk about his size and weight on Vince Carter's podcast. Lowry said on the VC show, it used to bother me a lot. I used to be bothered by it. I'm going to be honest with you, it used to really bother me. I don't care anymore. Yeah, yeah, being thick has helped me. I have no problem with it. You can make as many memes as you want. I embrace it. It's great. In the 2006 NBA draft, the Memphis Grizzlies picked Lowry with the 24th pick. He played for the Grizzlies for two and a half years before being sent to the Houston Rockets. Lowry's career didn't really take off until he joined the Toronto Raptors, which was Vince Carter's old team. Lowry played in Canada for nine years and made the playoffs seven times in a row, from 2014 to 2020. He was also chosen for the All-Star Game six times in a row from 2015 to 2020. Without a doubt, 2019 was the biggest year for the team during that time, and Lowry was a big part of how Toronto won the championship. The guard averaged 15 points, 6.6 assists, and 4.9 rebounds in the playoffs when the Raptors beat the Golden State Warriors in the finals to win the championship. Moving on, hates these guys. Nets superstars true feelings revealed as ugly exit looms. Kevin Durant doesn't seem to be the only Nets player who doesn't like how coach Steve Nash and general manager Sean Marks lead. A person who works for the Nets said that Kyrie Irving is also not too happy with the two. The source told the Post Josh Kosman, Kyrie Irving hates these guys. He thinks Nash is awful and Marks is bad. Monday, the Post confirmed that Durant told Cy that he had to choose between the 12-time All-Star and his coach and general manager. The report came from The Athletic. The face-to-face -face meeting in London happened after Durant asked to be traded out of Brooklyn a year after signing a four-year, $198 million contract extension. After losing Game 4 to the Boston Celtics in the playoffs, Durant had a very different opinion of Nash then as he does now. Even though the stars had said how they felt about Marks and Nash, Cy seemed to back up his GM and coach. I'm behind our front office and coaching staff, he wrote on Twitter Monday night. We'll make choices that are good for the Brooklyn Nets. Due to his COVID-19 vaccination status and local rules, the Nets made it so that Irving couldn't be around the team until December of last season. The uncertain status of the Mercurial Guard was a big part of what went wrong with the season and led James Harden to ask to be traded out of town. Irving's one-year $36.5 million player option was picked up on June 29th, and Durant asked for a trade the next day. In related news, Diana Taurasi injured for the rest of the year. Is this the end of the 40-year-old? Diana Taurasi is one of the few women in sports history who are as important as she is. The American is thought to be the best player of all time. With three titles and two MVPs, she is a legend in the WNBA. At the age of 40, she's nearing the end of her athletic career with the Phoenix Mercury, the team she's played for her whole life in the United States. However, an injury could put an early end to her great career. The Arizona franchise said that Tasari has strained her quadriceps, which means that her season is over. Even though she's 40, her performance level is still very high. 
and she was a key player for a Mercury team that was trying to make the playoffs. On July 29th, she scored 30 points, making her the first woman in the WNBA to do so at age 40 or older. Only Michael Jordan and Dirk Nowitzki had a game with that many points when they were about the same age as the Mercury player. Last season, she had a career-high 500 points, 100 rebounds, and 100 assists. Only Sabrina Ionescu, one of the young stars, and Skylar Diggins-Smith can match that. Tarasi was named the best woman basketball player of all time in 2021, and it seemed like she could have kept playing. But now, her chances of going back on the court depend on how well she gets better from this serious injury to her quadriceps. Finally, NBL emerges as shock option for Bronny James as LeBron's master plan is revealed. The NBL liked The Ball Show and now has a good chance of getting The Bronny Show. The Athletic says that after high school, LeBron James' oldest son, Bronny, will choose between college, the G League Ignite, and Australia's NBL for the 2023 season. As LeBron plans out the last few years of his career in Los Angeles, where he could get a contract extension, one thing has become clear. The future Hall of Famer wants more than anything to play in the NBA with his son. Bronny, who is 17, will be able to be drafted in 2024. He could be picked up by the team LeBron is on or by a brave team willing to go against the Kings' wishes. Joe Varden of The Athletic brought up Bronny's options, including the NBL, when talking about LeBron's future. This is a sneaky nugget that will get Australian basketball fans excited. Bronny will be in college with G League Ignite in Australia or wherever Rich Paul puts him in the fall of 2023, Arden wrote. Bronny is a six foot three point guard who is ranked 39th on ESPN's list of the top 100 recruits. In March, Sydney Kings owner Paul Smith told the Sydney Morning Herald there's only one city big enough for LeBron and Bronny, and that is Sydney. Every week, we'd fill 18,000 seats, with LaMelo Ball and Josh Giddy, among others, showing that Australia can be the perfect stepping stone to the NBA. The NBL will probably be working on a plan to convince Bronny and LeBron that it's the right move for his development. Dave McMenamin of ESPN says that James met with team vice president and general manager Rob Palenka to talk about his future with the Lakers. James is in the last year of his contract with the Lakers. Rich Paul, James' agent and CEO of Clutch Sports, told ESPN that the two sides had what was called a productive conversation. A new deal hasn't been made yet, though. That's all we could cover in our very limited time today. However, make sure to subscribe for more NBA news in the future.